And even if you get as close as you can, even with a short adapter like this, it still doesn't reach. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna have to have like a six or eight foot cable so that one can reach over here. So normally when you come up to a supercharger, you're gonna back in. So that charger would go to that portion of the car when you back up to it. Well, all Fords and the Rivian are all on the driver's side front, so you're gonna have to pull in. You're gonna take up two spots to charge one car at a slower rate, so it's gonna take longer. I don't see where this is helping people. All right, so this video is all about the new charging situation that's gonna be happening next year in 2024 and then really happening in 2025. Um, this is not a bashing Tesla thing. This, I wanna see if we can start a conversation in the comments below, a nice conversation, not anything negative about Ford, uh, about GM, about Rivian, about Volvo now. And there is some construction in the background, which is kind of fitting because I think Tesla is gonna be under construction for this. Uh, for quite a while. So the first question is, who does this benefit? Does this benefit Tesla? Of course it benefits Ford, Rivian, uh, Volvo, GM, and uh, Aptera, I think it's called. Uh, but they already said they were going to before. So yes, this benefits them for sure. This benefits Tesla because they're gonna collect millions of dollars from these companies so they can install more ch superchargers. But is this good for the Tesla owners? That's the question now. Is this good for you? Are there gonna be more lines? This thing is going to take up two parking spots. Now, I'm sure later on in 2025 when they actually have the software for all the new ones, they're gonna change that charging port from the driver's side to the passenger side, and then that, be, that will be a Tesla plug instead of a J17. So you won't need an adapter, but for probably two years, you're gonna need an adapter. And that's gonna be some growing pains right now. I'm out in North Carolina where there's no lines for charging, but with Rivians and these, there's gonna be some lines because again, two parking spots are gonna be taken up to charge one car. And this car can only charge at 150 kilowatts. Yes, it charges for 150 kilowatts for a lot longer than what Tesla can, but it's still gonna be sitting there taking up two spots for almost twice as long as a Tesla. Maybe when they rewrite the software, maybe it won't, maybe it'll be able to take more. I, I don't know, we don't, we're all in the beginning stages of this, but it's kind of concerning. But I wanna, my question is, is it concerning to you owning a Tesla where you're at? Do you have lines right now? Are there plenty of superchargers around you? Again, this benefits Tesla for sure. They're gonna collect lots of money. And pretty soon all EVs will jump this way, but except for probably, VW. I think VW's kind of screwed here. Although, with no one using Electrify America, maybe those will get a little bit better, or they'll have their choice of four empty superchargers to plug in their cars. Uh, they won't have to wait at all. The other question is, does that affect the value of that car? I think these are gonna go up in value. I think Rivians are worth more now. I would have liked a Rivian. I sold my Plaid Model S, and I really thought about getting a Rivian, but in that process, Rivian was not part of this. So if Rivian was part of this, I may have considered a Rivian. I don't know. I think, I think this benefits non-Teslas for sure. That's a question we don't know the answer to yet. I don't think. No one really does. But it definitely is affecting the value of other cars. On that note, this is a 2020 Mach-E GT, and I want to thank Champion Car Company in Mooresville here for loaning me this vehicle for the video. Uh, this is a really nice spec vehicle. This is uh, Alcantara or suede seats inside, black interior, moonroof, uh, the nice big wheels on it. This is the GT, so it's got some pretty good power. This amazing color. This is a very bright color, but that, when you're getting a Mach-E, you want something bright like this with a lot of metallic flake. This is really cool. The really cool thing is 8,500 miles on it. They just told me that this is the lowest priced Mach-E in the country right now, $49.99. This is over a $60,000 MSRP. Uh, if you're interested, there's a link down below. Thank you again, Champion Car Company, for loaning me this vehicle. Check out the interior. This is actually kind of nice. I mean, I know most of you are Tesla people, but suede seats. This does have Ford's version of autopilot, which is actually decent. I used it. Cool car. Thanks again, Champion. So what is this adapter going to look like? This is an adapter I have already for from Tesla to J17. Now the fast charger has that other adapter, has the two little prongs for CCS. 
is it going to be a gigantic bulky adapter is it going are they going to be able to get those three out of this i don't know this is tesla they might be able to because tesla makes things simpler more simpler sort of more simple anyway you know what i mean as you saw in the beginning they're going to need a six foot adapter in the meantime all these cars are going to need a longer adapter and it's something that each car is going to have to to purchase to, to make it fair, otherwise we're gonna have iced spots by EVs. That sounds weird to me. I actually like all the uh, construction noise in the background. It's kind of fitting for this, vi this video. But I think what's gonna happen, since Tesla is under construction with this, I think it's gonna happen later on next year, maybe in the summertime of next year, so a year from now, maybe even longer than that. So we, there's plenty of time to uh, do the software to figure out the adapter situation to figure out the parking situation and the education of the non Tesla owners going in to charge non Teslas at a Tesla. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful to say. I'm sure Tesla is going to take the initiative to write the code for their superchargers to work with Ford, to work with uh, GM, Rivian, and who knows, maybe Porsche. Well, Porsche's VW, so probably not Porsche. Uh, what other EVs are there? There's a ton of them coming out. It makes total sense to me that if you had a non-Tesla that you want to charge on this network, not this network. I mean, this is just home charging. You know what I mean. But I'm curious to find out what you guys think. Down below, nicely in the comments, voice your opinion. What you think? Is this a great move for Tesla? Is it a great move for your Tesla stock? Is this going to help Tesla? Uh, is it going to help you? In the long run, that's what it boils down to. Is it going to help you out at your superchargers uh, at anywhere you charge. I mean, most people charge at home, but there's a lot of people on trips that you go and there's a long line waiting, especially on holiday weekends. So are all these 12 stall uh, char superchargers gonna turn into 40 stalls because uh, 20 non-Teslas are taking up all 40 stalls? I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to find out what the future is gonna be. Um, and we don't know what that's gonna be. Are you selling your Tesla now because of this? Are you going out and buying a gas car? Let me know. How often do you supercharge by the way? I really don't. So this is gonna affect me, but not by much. Also, I'm curious, what do you think about the values of Teslas now? There are, all EVs are kind of dropping a little bit, but I think these are gonna go up in value. But what do you think about your Teslas? Is, is that gonna drop in value because of this? As always, stay awesome, stay positive. Stay positive in the comments and let's have a polite conversation. I'll see you down there.